The moment before the axe rifles fired, Logan Thackeray swept his hand out in a fan. A blue aura bled from his fingertips into the air, solidifying it in a curved wall before the scouts. Fire! The Char Centurion roared. The axe rifles boomed and vomited smoke and lead, but the shots struck the ethereal membrane and sank into it and were eaten away. Bullets showered rust to the ground. The leader of the Char stared, his jaw dropping. You're full of surprises. I'm Logan Thackeray. I protect those who are mine. I'm Ritlock Brimstone, the Char shot back. I kill those who aren't. I recognize your blade. Did you say Rurik Brimstone? Ritlock, the Char snarled. Logan shrugged. I just figured, since you stole Prince Rurik's sword, you probably also stole his name. Ritlock lashed the air with the burning blade. The sword's mine now. After this fight, Logan said, whirling his warhammer in a figure eight, Sir Hothin will once again be in the hands of a human. During this fight, Ritlock spat, Sir Hothin will once again be in the guts of a human. The Flame Legion invades our territory, and the Bloodsaw Mill workers take the brunt. The mill would benefit from having additional workers for defense, and to relieve some of their workload. The Flame HQ lies northeast of the mill. We've been watching them, but we don't have the resources to wipe them out. We'd appreciate any assistance you could offer. Oh man, the sunset. That's a real shame. Welcome, guys. We are on a big adventure today. And as you just saw uh, through a bit of a super speed section, we have just arrived in a very different area of the world. An area of the world that you guys basically completely missed here. Uh, the Diesa Plateau. Remember, because of our decisions in the early story with our biography, we really didn't get to explore this map, which is a prominent part of the Char experience. It is the second map of the game. You know, you leave the Plains of Ashford, you come here. So I wanted to, on our last visit to Ascalon, and I really mean that, this is it for the core game. Obviously, expansions and living world and stuff in the future will be looking back here. Uh, for our last visit, I wanted to show you a pretty iconic place to do with the Flame Legion. Uh, so, of course, the story right now is Ritlock has not even told us about this properly. Logan has, kind of, and our Herald certainly has. Uh, the Char are on a big offensive against the Flame Legion right now with packed assistance, and both Logan and uh, Ritlock are together apparently fighting so we're gonna go we're gonna deal with this uh, So I wanted to remind you guys a little bit of the flame legion and what better place than here at the Diesa plateau Where at the very top there is a really badass mini dungeon So our goal at the moment is to go to the next main dungeon of the game the sixth one But uh, this one here. Oh, sorry. Wait. No, is this the fifth one we're going to? Anyway, this one here is a mini dungeon, which means it's not actually an instance. It stays in the open world. It's a beautiful looking tomb, isn't it? Really cool. You'll notice that where the actual location is called is the Flame Temple Tomb. So basically, the Flame Legion have ran in here and co-opted this as their headquarters. And interestingly, ever so slightly north of this is where I ended the last episode, the Sati Passage and whatnot. But there's no, like, portal between the two. So this is very close to high-level Flame Legion territory. It just so happens to get a look in on a quite low-level map, only 15 to 25. Uh, so we can speak to this character here, Risa Death Hunter, before we move on. And she says, The Font of Rand, is it, which is what this, you know, the tombs themselves are called, uh, is an old Ascalonian tomb. It's been taken over by the Flame Legion, and they've sealed the gate with magic too powerful to disrupt. So this gorgeous architecture, this beautiful water feature, all of this stuff, the Font of Rand itself. We could visit this area in the original, and the tombs were not here. So I think this is a really nice example, actually, of ArenaNet being able to say, hey, 
Let's take some artistic liberties and show off beautiful big new buildings and stuff in areas of the world that didn't exist before just because the engine is so much more capable and hardware is so much more capable of rendering these big badass things. It's sort of like why the Great Northern Wall in Guild Wars 2 looks so awesome and massive and arced and crooked and it's got all the chains and graffiti on it as the char tried to pull it down versus in the original game where it was much more simple. You know, I like it when they take these liberties like this. Uh, as long as it's, you know, adding to the setting rather than removing from the setting. Anyway, what's the Flame Legion doing in here then? They've sealed the gate with magic? Uh, we don't know for certain. I only hope they don't destroy the ancient artifacts that are kept within. Yeah, she clearly looks like a member of the Priory, right? Tell me more about the font. It was built centuries ago as a burial ground for the highest ranking military officers. This was before the searing, back when the Ascalonians died and stayed dead. We've seen in the Ascalon catacombs, we've seen various examples of people being reanimated. So not only would we have Flame Legion in there, but we'd have Ghosts too, and that's a fun pairing, right? Um, is there any way to get inside? Well, the gate is sealed with magical en energy emanating from Incendio Templum. I'd wager that if the Flame Legion lost their headquarters there, they'd have to retreat here. Perhaps I'll check out Incendio Templum. So Incendio Templum is a hidden area over here. And you see this very unique icon on the world map here. It says Font of Rand Portal closed. And so basically there's a meta event, guys, all over here where you gather a warband together at the, the uh, Bloodsaw Mill. You push them all up. You take a Flame Legion fiery area. You knock out some of their, you know, great lava constructs. The portal opens. You chase them into the mini dungeon. And you get to take out a big boss who... R rattles on about their leader, Geheron Balefire. And he's who I really want to focus on for now. I'm not going to go in the dungeon. I actually already have a video on the dungeon, and it's like two videos at least to go through and show you all the stuff. There's really exciting, interesting puzzles and stuff. I recommend you guys search up on my uh, channel for the Font of Rand if you want to see what it's like. Um, but uh, yeah, Geheron Balefire is mentioned in this dungeon, one of the earlier mentions of him, I guess, for the open worlds. He's the big wig behind the Flame Legion. And the story kind of does a funny thing. We're going to go back to the uh, Black Citadel here. I guess to the Memorial Quadrant. Uh, the game kind of does a funny thing. In that it talks a lot about the Flame Legion in the early stages. But then it relies almost entirely on open world to explain the story of how we assault the Flame Legion and go head to head with Geheron. So, so much of the world building and character building for that guy is just kind of out there that you can easily miss. And I'm going to take it as my job to show you that real natural course into the dungeon right here, right now, with two NPCs, first of all, here at the Black Citadel. Starting off with, oh wow, I can't believe we're standing right next to them. Um, starting off here with Selena's Warbreaker. I knew they were in the Memorial Quadrant, but I didn't know they'd be right here. Uh, okay, hello, what can I do for you, she says. Well, we say, I'm Tyrix Ripjaw, who are you? She says, I'm Selena Warbreaker. As a diplomat, I was one of the negotiators for the treaty between the legions and the human kingdom. Of course, Tyrix knows a lot about this. That must have been unpleasant, we say. And she says, the negotiations are ongoing. There's still several sticking points. However, my part in them is over. So, what do you do now? I work to preserve the legacy of Carla Scortraiser, who led our original overthrow of the Flame Legion, restored the other legions to glory, and opened the door to the legions for female soldiers. So, I might not be able to show you too much of this, guys, but remember, the Flame Legion, once upon a time, were all over the chart. Now, they're kind of outcasts. It was because of Carla and the rise of the female char who were just as effective as warriors and the Flame Legion didn't appreciate that, that they kind of got overthrown. Uh, and so a lot of the events you find in this game to do with the Flame Legion nod back to Carter constantly. And it's really kind of cool. She appears in a lot of dialogue, but uh, we mostly know her through this statue here at the Black Citadel, which we did interact with earlier on in the series. Maybe we even spoke to Salinas. Um, why put so much effort into dwelling on the past? Because 200 years later... Geheron Balefire is attempting to become a god and assume role over all the legions. We need Carla Scortraiser's example as an inspiration to us all. Whatever it takes to take the Flame Legion for once and for all. Goodbye. So here, she's very clear about this. The Flame Legion's goal is to make their leader a god. And there is precedent for that in this story. We have seen things become a god. So that's one character I really wanted us to meet. The other one is in here at the trading post same area of the map uh, but he's basically looking at the merchants going about their business you notice this guy's not really in armor or anything he looks like he's just in civilian rags maybe off duty uh, like long term off duty maybe I don't know but here he's called Vetus God Slayer Vetus God Slayer mercenary speak fast God Slayer isn't that a bit presumptuous we say 
All goals are presumptuous until you accomplish them, and I will be the one to kill Geheron Balefire. Do you have a plan to go with that goal? Of course. Either I will kill him, or he will kill me. Either way, I won't have to keep living in fear of a berserker like Balefire. So here, we find him described as a berserker. Berserker is actually one of the subclasses, elite specializations, warriors can become later on. So I love this description there that he's a berserker. Uh, and we're going to try and hunt him down here. Maybe we'll learn a thing or two from him, right guys? Uh, you're a mercenary? I am. Although, at the moment, I'm not taking any contracts. I'm gathering intelligence on Geheron Balefire. He's my next target. Did someone hire you to take him down, or is this a vendetta? Both. I drew up the mission for personal reasons, but it wasn't hard to find eager backers, and my name will be remembered alongside the heroes of old. Maybe. But I don't recall the heroes of old needing sponsors. Yeah, but that's just because that doesn't get written in the history books, Tyrix. So yeah, he's a cool character now. You guys are probably wondering, wow, is this guy going to actually appear coming up in the story? The answer to that is no. And that's a little bit unfortunate, I guess. But there's another side, right, of this, which is I'm showing you just these couple of characters here. If you've been paying close attention at the start and the end of all these videos and the ambient dialogue I've been throwing in, you'll realize a ton of Char are out to kill Geheron everywhere. They all care about taking him out, cutting off the head of the Flame Legion. Uh, I think there's something, like, personal about it for the Char in that, you know, he's like them and they view it as a bit of a challenge, almost kind of a Norny perspective there. But so, it's really not that sad he doesn't appear in the story because he's just one among many. Uh, who will eventually take him down? Well, we've seen some char placing bets. Well, let's see. So, uh, back out here at the uh, final char map. This is Fireheart Rise. Last time we were here, we just ran on through because we were very busy with a mission to do with Chahern. But we can kind of take a back seat for a second now. This is a bit like uh, after we won at Claw Island. We can take a bit of a relaxation moment uh, before we visit the Temple of the Forgotten Gods. Uh, and maybe actually speak to some of these characters now. So, lots of them have stuff to say. Many what? are bored. And they say, have to stay in fighting shape if I hope to win out war over the Flame Legion. What do you mean? Sparring! Keeps you fit! Keeps you ready for battle! What do you say? Up for a round or two? Uh, not right now, but thanks for the offer. Most of these NPCs basically offer to spar with you, so there's not too much you can say. But we do have the Heart Vendor over here. Speak. Ah, tar everywhere. The stuff sinks so bad and it burns my nostrils and it clumps in my fur. Only way is to cut it out. I don't know how the Flame Legion can live so long so close to the stuff. Well, they probably have magic that makes it, you know, easy to get rid of, right? Not that none of these Char use magic, but their proficiency levels within the Flame Legion are probably much higher. I blame the tar on our inability to push any further into this region. Not only does it seize up our machines, but the fumes have a noticeable effect on the troops. What sort of effect? They perform their important tasks, mining the perimeter, fighting off the flame, but fumes cause a malaise that has led to basic tasks being overlooked. Like what? Well, they stop training and tending to general maintenance. There are gears and rats all over the place. Well, anything I can do? Obviously, killing Flame Legion and Tar Elementals would be a big help. But just as important, we have to organize this scrap. Take care of our rodent problem and kick the troops' tails into shape. So just do generic things to help these guys out. And as you can see, you can kind of run over to many of these who are looking to stay in fighting shape. There are some other little bits of cool dialogue there. I think this guy's a what? chef. And uh, he's a reference to something that I look back... Fondly on and also cynically on. Check it out, guys. I know what you want to ask. And the answer is, it'll be ready when it's ready. So he's the cook. This line, though, it'll be ready when it's ready. A uh, bit of an insight into the development years of Guild Wars 2. As a fan, you know, as someone who played the original waiting for the second to come out, this was the company's mantra. This was what they said over and over. And you actually find a lot of gaming companies, I feel like, adopt this line that. Not even just gaming companies. It's kind of a bit more of, you know, just a basic corporate thing you see rolling around. But this was really something that ArenaNet owned as a development studio. And they said it constantly. They really, really believed in it. Uh, and they kind of convinced many of us fans that this was truly the situation we were in. That the game would only ever come out when it was ready. They didn't have a release date for us, so please stop asking. Because they want it to be perfect. They want it to be the best MMO ever. And it will only come when it's ready. Uh, I look back on the, those days, you know, those heady days kind of fondly. But at the same time, I look at how many different areas, you know, we just criticized the more recent arc, Chapter 7, quite thoroughly, I think. Um, there's a lot of things about this game that I, were genuinely nowhere near ready and blatantly nowhere near ready. 
and the devs just kind of released anyway in the end. So it feels like for years they were telling us it will be ready when it's ready, only for that to mean nothing in the end. And almost to feel a bit deceitful in the end, which is really unfortunate. I don't know whether this weird stuff went on with their publishers behind closed doors. But I kind of feel a bit twisted Look at this. Here they are honouring it in-game, and it's kind of a mixed bag when I read it. It makes me smile, nonetheless. Uh, but he's just talking about food, obviously. What do you care? So we've got uh, loads of different options. Generally, they all actually lead to the same dialogue, except this last one, which is actually exit dialogue, just marked incorrectly with the icon. Doesn't matter if it's not ready. Just the smell has made me lose my appetite. Hey, it could be worse. We're usually limited to what we can catch. Skelk, hermit, crabs. I like this idea. These are just random things we can fight around the game and the thought of actually eating them. Uh, this here is Hadrian's pet Doliak. Had to do something. Yesterday we had tar bubble casserole for lunch. Ugh. Uh, are you really that desperate for food? It can be tough getting supplies to camps and watch posts this far north, especially with the tar clog in the waterway. But we get by with good old Legion ingenuity and the occasional pet. I love this. I already mentioned when we were here in Fireheart Rise before, but the Chara struggling with tar stuff. You've got to remember that in the original game, you are in the middle of the searing where the Flame Legion have made all water across the entire region it feels tar. And the humans were being starved and uh, strangled out of that location. And now I feel like the Char get a little bit, the other legions get a bit of a taste of their own medicine here. Anyway, we do get uh, these guys. No, it's not these guys. I think these two have special dialogue for us as well. So we've got Engineer here, Cole Evershock. You got any skills? Sure, why do you ask? And here the dialogue kind of gives a hint to this map that you might recognize from Straits of Devastation. Listen, I'm trying to gauge how you'll fit in here and what you have to offer. We have plenty of trouble with the Flame Legion and natural hazards. This isn't the kind of place where an unskilled soldier can survive. Flame Legion? They're the whole reason we're here. This is as close to the headquarters as we've ever gotten, and we intend to push right up their front steps and into their communal mess hall. We're tired of small victories. It's time for a big one. Sounds like a great idea. Where's the headquarters? Don't you worry about that. There's plenty of Flame Legion territory between here and there. We've got loads of ground to cover and a whole army of Flame Shamans to school. Troops are moving west first. I recommend you follow their movements. Listen to the way the dialogue is structured here, guys. West, they're telling us not to go north. The volcano, Frangma, where the Flame Legion actually really are based, where Geheron himself is, right as I speak, is north. But they're asking us to go west first, and they're talking like claiming territory, and it's true, there are events. You claim this territory, you claim this territory, you can continue going along. I wonder if this was gonna be like Straits once upon a time, where it was like a long invasion in meta for lots of players going all the way up, and you can actually follow a vague road that takes you there. But the thing is, those events and that infrastructure was never added in the end. They just treated this like a regular map. Even Straits of Devastation, as cool as it is, and we've got a ton more to show off, kind of miss what it was going for. And Fireheart certainly wasn't structured well enough for it in the end. So, I don't know, the dialogue's here, and I feel like we miss out a little bit, you know. I would have loved, like, a big uh, Invasion Force-style map fully realized. But it took until the expansions for the devs to figure out how to do this super well. This guy as well uh, has a little bit more of it. He says, I can only assume that you have a reason for bothering me. What are you doing in this territory? We're chasing Flame Tail. This is their entrance hall, you might say. Look around and you'll see what I mean. They've turned this whole region into a burnt out, melted disaster. They're long overdue for an outing. Are there headquarters around here? You might say so. They're all out over here, summoning their insane gods and demons. I don't recommend traveling alone. This is a full on military assault. So, uh, yeah, this idea of summoning insane gods, you'll remember I gave you this trivia on the previous map where we had this big event here. Remember the giant flame elemental and stuff we could see that had been summoned? The Flame Legion have a specific elite sect they call the God Forged, who are people who sacrifice themselves in the name of Geheron to become more powerful. Okay, uh, so yeah, we got all the big tanks and things you can climb around in them as always We're gonna move away from the invasion force and though we were not recommended to we're gonna go north and straight out into this tar lake So uh, for all practical purposes the uh, gameplay just treats this as swimming here, but you find various uh, Different kinds of creatures around the reason I'm coming to the tar lake is not actually because it's an easy route north And the map is mostly empty up here, but because one of the most iconic dynamic events for the player base exists right here and it's because of the rewards you can get from it so you guys are more than familiar with dynamic events at this point in the game that's fine uh, but you also have noticed that sometimes when you beat a dynamic event you get a special reward for having done it well the special reward for a very specific dynamic event here in the game and i don't really know where it triggers we'll have to wander around and find it 
uh, is very, very, very important for most of the player base. And since a lot of new people are here, this series is meant to be a bit of a primer for you guys. I really feel the need to show it off. It's to do with cleaning up the tar here, and we've just got to figure out where it begins. So I see you in a second. I guess we do also have the heart here. The Flame Legion may have ravaged this lake, but cleaning it up, I'm making this a technological breakthrough with my tar cleaning devices. That's what they call a silver lining. Okay, fine. Christ, just listen to how nasty this map is. All right, so up north we have a event here, the Monstrous Tar Elemental. I think this could be the start. You see that there's two defeated allies here. And uh, yeah, we got this to deal with. So Tar Elementals we haven't seen for ages. You might not even remember having seen them in the series yet. Uh, they are often associated with Tar Heavy Areas. And thus, of course, what does that mean? Flame Legion. So let's try and take this out. Hopefully it won't be too bad. It is a veteran. But uh, we are not scaling this event too much with lots of players. So hopefully we can take it out. Tyrix is a pretty hardened warrior at this point. He shouldn't have to worry too much. I know that there's lava on the ground here, but that won't actually hurt. It's not like proper lava. We'll find later, believe me. We are about to go to a volcano after all. And a much bigger and more prominent one than perhaps even Mount Maelstrom. Just for what it is. Ready for anything. I think that's the last of them. Let's head back to camp. If only they gave medals for this sort of work. Huh, if they did that, we'd all be janitors. All right, chaps, let's see what they got. Refreshing. So what I'm actually going to do here is follow these char as they swim through. Now, this might feel really natural and obvious to you guys watching the, the, the series here. But uh, the truth is, as, ga as players, as gamers, what most people do is they let just the top right dictate where they go and how they view the world. Like, if the top right says to do a heart, they just do the heart and then move on. If the top right just says, says to do story, they, they move on. If the top right says there's a dynamic event, they'll know about it. But they don't really use their eyes to look at the environment. And that's one of the things that Guild Wars 2 is really cool about. Uh, the first game was terrible for making you look at the environment. But this game rewards you a lot. If you actually look at these guys, you'll see that they're moving somewhere. Well, what if we follow them? Maybe another dynamic dynamic event will trigger. Uh, it's not spot. only metas that chain event into event into event. A lot of the other ones do too. And what you guys will find is a whole other side and appreciation for Guild Wars 2. Just following NPCs. Because you'll see every event out there naturally has NPCs loop from where they start to later. Like these guys will eventually go back to that tire elemental. The question is just how long will that take? Oh, is that it? Are we done? Do we not get any more spoken dialogue? I thought they'd have another event here. We did it. And you know what? I smell victory in tar. I guess another player came here and did the pre-events. And that tar element was the last one. So here, now you'll see that Giles Cole Grip has landed. Wheels keep turning. We keep fighting. She's become a vendor. She says, another day, another victory. Save the war effort. Stick a wrench in the Flame Legion. You know the drill. Find any anything interesting while you're doing all that winning? Well, she did. So here you can find a special item. Most vendors in Guild Wars 2, unfortunately, just sell the same generic set of things over and over and over again. But when it comes to dynamic event ones, you can find really special wares. And here is one, hidden, buried out here, only on this map, only from this NPC in the entire game. And may I remind you, we've explored barely any of it so far. Only 11%, 80 episodes and counting. Here we do find fire elemental powder. Now it costs one silver and four copper, so it's not too cheap, especially for launch economies. This actually was a bit of a thing on your wallet. But read this, double click to summon a pet fire elemental for five minutes. Can only be used once every 30 minutes. So if I come down here to the quantity amount and I say, let's buy 50, I can pick these up. You'll note by the way, by doing this, that the item is soul bound. So there's no point in putting it like in an account slot in your inventory or anything like that. Only Tyrix will be able to use this. I can't put it in my bank and put it on other characters. Uh, but this soulbound item, when I double click it from my inventory, it kind of acts as another skill, if you will. Uh, because when I do it, it summons an ally for us, an ember. It's immune to burning. And if we come and aggro one of these crabs, you can see how it fights. It will spawn at the level that we are. So because I'm scaled down right now, we got to wait for the crab to attack us and then the ember will defend us. Or it should. Ember, do you want to defend us? <laughs> it's not doing anything right now. These are really good, guys. We, there we go. All right, I had to attack. Now it's aggroed. It. And it will fight. Uh, it has its own skill bar. Look, it will summon lava fonts, just like Casey could use. Three at once. 
smaller in size, but perhaps the, the damage packet. It will take aggro from us. The crabs are now on uh, it. It does AoE damage. It's done 50% damage to these crabs here. And it can summon these triple lava fonts over and over again. So if at any point you're fighting big bosses uh, with very large, you know, hit boxes, areas that you can strike within them, Fire Elemental Powder is amazing. It will run around with you for five minutes before dying or then going away. We get a debuff on us now, or a buff, that says, okay, you've used Fire Elemental Powder recently. You can use your next one in another 30 minutes. These weird ideas of big, powerful things that are on long cooldowns is kind of what elite skills could have become. But instead in Guild Wars, weirdly, especially for stuff like Fire Elemental Powder, it's kind of tied to inventory stuff. Big mechanic. And if you guys are players of Guild Wars 2, new players, quite often you'll be doing a world boss or, you know, you'll be in a specific place out in the open world because this stuff gets disabled in instances quite often and the really hardcore content. But in a lot of the other stuff, people might say, oh, use Fire Ellie, use your Fire Ellie. When they say that, they're talking about Fire Elemental Powder. And now you know, I've talked about it here on the series. Hopefully that's somewhat helpful. Uh, I also kind of, hold on, want to sort out our bag. So this was only a four slot bag. And I bought some bigger ones a while ago. So that's 12 slot. That's good. Let's put the fire early powder here. And then we can... Actually, hold on. So I'm going to come up here. I will show bags. Yeah, let's get rid of our undead battle potions that are in there. Unequip that bag. Equip this 12 slot steel box. That's looking good. Move these over. This is a pretty uh, small bag. That's the invisible bag we got for free from the personal story. I'm going to unequip that. Let's go here. Let's unequip this 8-slot bag and replace it with a 12-slot box. Come back up. Hide bags. Brilliant. Tyrix is now looking pretty good and it's got a lot of space. Now, these undead potions won't be too good for us uh, in the content upcoming because we'll be fighting Flame Legion, but I'll hold on to them anyway. All right, so there you go. That's it. Let's uh, get a move on um, to the uh, actual volcano now. Here we go. Now, what I could do is follow all these roads and do the events like we did before, but we've already seen it. Remember when we came all the way up here to Snow Ridge Camp? Well, we can return now, and don't worry, it's not to punish this shady guy here, Ignavius. You there. You seem the type to rush headlong into danger. That fool Tucson could use your aid. Well, instead, let's follow... We're not going to go do anything with Tucson. Let's follow the road along now towards the volcano. You'll see straight away we're under the effects of a meta, the packed campaign gone. against the Flame Legion. And while we're under the effects of this, we can press M and see what events are currently ongoing. So there's an outpost nearby called the Tough Stone and Vorgus Garrison, which is a flippable location, just like we see in Straits of Devastation, that maybe we should go over and help them out in the war effort. Now, in this area of the world is a pretty iconic thing for me, right here. Let's see if we can find it somewhere. I'm zooming the camera out really far so that I can get a good glimpse of it. Some of the Flame Legion territory here, oh, I, I don't really think I can see it, uh, appeared, though, in the original trailer, the very start of the very first video of this series, you guys might remember. We watched a trailer for the game. Uh, that was like a super early uh, thing, and it showed some Flame Legion, like, hands, like, holding fire. Well, that's actually here, at the very top of this map. I like pointing out when all those little things happen. Last time we did, I think, was in Ma Mount Maelstrom. Uh, but yeah, check it out. Look, the Vigiler here. Priory Arcanist here, a Whispers agent is here. All these guys are trying to help the legions deal with Geheron. And uh, yeah, it's not going to be easy. Our job is actually to break this gate here. Oh my god, and we're getting roasted alive by their flamethrowers. Yeah, have we seen Flame Legion using flamethrowers just yet? Maybe we haven't. It's kind of dangerous. Oh my god, Terex, come on man, you've already got one peg leg. Oh dear. Uh, yeah, we uh, may need a gear upgrade pretty soon. This is quite bad. Uh, let's see if we can get through, though. I'll see you guys in a second. Here goes Justin. <laughs> Oof, just about made it. Just about. Broke the gate. Your bones will be the flames of the Heron Tales, Oh, will they? I love this. You get the uh, references to the big boss in all the satellite camps and stuff. So, the um, next event, once we've broken the gate, very simple. We get inside. This place, by the way, that I'm currently standing, even if you try and jump over the walls via various mechanics, like mountains and stuff, it actually won't let you in here. It always teleports you out until you do the very specific event that spawns to break the gate. So, you know, it's really kind of cool the way that they do that. Let's uh, keep taking out this shaman. We can kill his cronies as well. And if we're careful and we stay at the back of the base here, we hopefully won't have to... You are stronger than I thought, but still no match for the Flame Legion. You will burn for an eternity. 
we hopefully won't get any extra aggro. I don't know whether I will burn for eternity. Hell yeah! So we can capture Vorgus Stedding here. Hurry and shore up the defenses before they mount a counterattack. This won't sit well with their shamans. No, I'm sure it won't. So we can hang out here now. There's actually a chest as a reward here in addition to the regular event completion, which don't forget is giving us karma and experience and gold, helping us to get close to level 8 and whatnot. Here from the chest. They're coming to take back their garrison. Guard the gates. No flame legion allowed. The pact will never submit to them or their so-called god. We'll be standing long after their flames are quenched. All right, well, good luck, guys. Uh, I'm not actually going to help them defend there. Hopefully, another player comes along and does it. We've got bigger fish to fry. But look, we did a good start there. And, you know, the meta is about basically taking these little outposts and things in the in the nearby area. I, I like how the Flame Legion already regard Geheron as a god. But in other senses, we kind of hear that he's trying to become a god, which are really two kind of different things, right? Uh, he is just a char, after all. And the idea is he wants his, his reality to match his legacy and his legend, you know? And... It, He's larger than life right now, so he's got to try and unify the two. I think that's kind of brilliant. All right, so coming on through here, we can find... Uh, we can move a bit more away from the pact now. And uh, we can instead come to a hidden cave that's mostly dealt with by the legions themselves. And really is the site and the location of the start of the real push to the volcano and the attack on the flame legion really if you were going to consider any one big moment as the start i think we're looking at it here and it starts at liberation dell so there's a heart and you'll notice we're in a new meta now called the battle for citadel flame and the Senecas castrum the ash legion of liberation dell holds Senecas castrum but the gates of flame are in the flame legion or hands ash legion Smigger, Timberland is the first battlefield of the march to the Flame Citadel. We could use your help. So, guys, it's a volcano citadel. The Black Citadel, where we started our adventure and we keep returning to. Look at how big and powerful and awesome that is as a giant city. There's more citadels out there. The Flame one is built into a volcano. What can I do? I know I don't need to tell you to kill any Flame Legion enemies on site, but you could also destroy their elemental power sources or protect Ash control. Legion agents from I them. I want to use my right paw to scratch it. That's strange. That's not strange. I'd rather use my other paw. Then use it. By the time I notice what I'm doing, I've already scratched the itch. <laughs> that is ridiculous. I love some of these weird... I thought they were going to talk about Geheron there. No, no, no. That's one of the most absurd little, like... <laughs> weird slice of life these strange things that they could talk about up here. All right, so check it out. Basically, the story here is the Ash Legion are really sedentary. And they don't do much. Uh, they're planning, planning, planning always, and they're not really making what the push. Uh, but here you see that Janisa Flamefo says, Raisin the Raider has got himself in another type spot. He has a, he ran off to swear and he'd take down the gates of flame, or his name wasn't, well, you get the point. Care to go give him assist? And we can say, where is he? You'll find him near the spot I marked on your map. Hurry. Okay, and so she's showing us the way to the meta. Now, what I hoped happened as I started recording here, guys, is in truth, if you get here at the right time, you can walk up to this ledge here at the back of the cave, and Raisin stands here. What does this scout Speak. say? Stop. Stay down and stay quiet. What's going on? Right down there is Flame Legion country. You'll stand on the front line, the one that doesn't exist. From up here, we can monitor the Flame Legion soldiers' movements in the area. They're within range. Why don't you attack them? It's tempting, but we can be more effective if we know we're, if uh, they don't know we're here. Occasionally, one of those fire imps will wander onto this ledge, but we have to redraw into the dark of the cave. So you just hide. We occasionally might make small hit-and-run strikes when the risk is low. Someday, this might be a launching point for a full-scale attack, but we're maybe a dozen Ash Scouts. We prosper in the shadows. This reminds me of that terrible movie. I used to love it, but I watched it as an adult, and it's awful. Enemy at the Gates... Uh, where they kind of show, you know, World War II snipers having to just wait for ages. Even when they could take the shot, they have to wait and wait and wait because they could get a higher priority one later. Uh, but yeah, this is really the start. Raisin the Raider we just heard about, he stands here and you can speak to him and he's like grumpy and he's Blood Legion amongst all these ash. And he's saying, oh, this is really frustrating. I just want to attack. And eventually he'll just say, screw it, I'm doing it. And a dynamic event starts right here where Raisin runs on through this place. The Ash Legion like roar at him and say, no, you're being stupid. What are you doing? You remember that this person we just spoke to here called him a fool. Uh, we could have sparred and got a hero point there, by the way. And he comes on through it and we would be under the effects of a dynamic event, which is a single escort that takes us through all of this flame territory right to the gates of the volcano. I'm tired of all this ash strategy. It's time we took the fight to the Flame Legion's doorstep. How do you propose we do that? 
I'm not sure yet. I I'll think of something though. Maybe I'll just rush the gates and call out Balefire. That seems unwise. Ah, battle is for the bold, not the wise. If you seek wisdom, you better look elsewhere. I've had enough of these flame legion curs. It's time to storm the gates. If any of you are tired of Ash Legion sneaking, follow me now. Death to the Flame Legion. Which uh, isn't too far from here, actually, now, uh, since we did that big waypoint at the start of the video. That doesn't mean you're going to see all of the volcanic area. There's a ton more, as always, and I wish I could show it to you all in the series, but way down to the south, there's called lava trenches and badass stuff. But you'll get a good view of it like this right now. This is where we'd be following Raisin uh, on his dynamic event. There's another location right here. This is a cool one because it talks about the Godforged. If you're here at the right time with the right events, this is Seneca's Castrum. It's actually already been flipped and opened, so here you'll see lots of Ash Legion are available. I just waypointed through the wall here. But this is another place you can get. There's another escort nearby, but Raisin, it looks like, is slightly up to the north. So let's see if we can get out a bit. Um, maybe if we use our sword, we can leap through. Yeah, but look at this. This is like Mount Maelstrom on turbo charge, right? It's just... You, full of burning trees, which you don't really get at Mount Maelstrom. Loads more lava vents and things. Uh, the trees themselves are really cool. I think what they're doing here is they're actually referencing and looking back at uh, a Guild Wars 1 location up in the Blood Legion homelands. All the way up here, there was once upon a time a burning down forest. Not really to do with the Flame Legion so much as a Titan in the area, but hey, uh, we don't have to get into all that lore just yet. But the devs kind of went back and did Burning Forest again. The post-processing isn't as cool. Look at that block there from the Flamethrower. Wow, that was amazing. That's why I screen vi vibrated so much. Uh, but yeah, really, really just fantastic uh, kind of place to travel through. And here you will find the corpse of Raisin. So what has happened... And I really hope I can blow these guys up. This is going to be really tricky. These Flame Legion do not mess around, guys. It's this sword main hand. Oh, God, we're low. Uh-oh. Okay, so here you can see our skill five. That is the Signet of Agony. I need to pull back now. This is really bad. This is dangerous. The Flame Legion are not uh, as easy to deal with as I thought. They got their embers here. This is what the Ash Legion was talking about. Yeah, this is kind of the other side of Dynamic Events. It's, not, it's a bit of a shame, really. What will have happened is another player will have come here, triggered Raisin's event, escorted him for a moment, and then just left him here to die. <laughs> Which isn't good. Uh, so yeah, let's actually be much more careful here. Let's go Axe Axe Greatsword. Let's equip one of these back here. There we go. The Pact Avenger. Getting that Pact gear back on here, guys. Look at that. Badass looking longsword there. And uh, yeah, let's run on forwards here. Now, our build is actually pretty good. Remember the way that it's working? We get Might. And whenever we, from critting with the greatsword and stuff, and whenever we get might, uh, oh no, I don't know, yeah, yeah, we do, we gain health. Might makes right. Gain health and endurance whenever you apply might to yourself. You've scouted the path. It'll be dangerous, but it can be done. Excellent. Fall in, and let's take the fight to their gates. Uh, I wish I wasn't talking about my build there for a second. Right, so the Ash are on board now. Look, look, look. This is so cool. One Blood Legion guy channel on with Ash. It's interesting that Iron don't really have very much to do with the taking of the Citadel here. I guess Iron get... They're kind of the favorite children of this game anyway because we're in Iron territory and we're at the Black Citadel, not the Blood one or the Ash one or anything like that. So it kind of it, it's kind of cool that really when it comes to this big story here and the big push against Geheron, you know, I Iron doesn't need to have a big, big say in it, right? Um, so yeah, I kind of wish I wasn't talking about the build there so we could have heard that dialogue a bit more. But yeah, the, go the goal on this build is to gain lots of might. So we use four great justice to get loads of might, which heals us. The might makes us do more damage. And we're going to generally be using that setup uh, when we get through to Ritlock and Logan, who are out here somewhere too. So I guess it goes to say, actually, this might not be the only offense. There's probably other offenses going on where Iron may have helped because Ritlock and Logan have already slipped all the way back into this terrible, dangerous place. Oh, Logan, you idiot. What if he doesn't listen to you? Ugh. You'll notice here we're doing heart as well as we go through. The gates of flame are beckoning. Let's take them. And Raisin says that because, look up there, guys. That's Rangmir. That's it itself. That's where the Citadel and the gates are. You'll notice that there's even weird magical floating things in the area now. Uh, and, yeah, that's basically showing the Flame Legion's influence on the area. I think the idea is that this naturally wouldn't be like this. But the Flame Legion have managed to, like, tap into the volcano and spread its influence, almost. That's kind of a headcanon thing of mine and just what I think they're kind of getting at. But... Hard to be 100% for sure. There we go. With that res, we've helped the Ash Legion out here. More shamans. 
And we're just going to keep pushing the dynamic event here. Uh, there can be some unfortunate overlap sometimes, where while you're in the middle of doing this escort, other ones are going on, where the Flame Legion are summoning giant effigies. You can see one over there. Look, 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 that's a construct of the Flame Legion over there. The effigy, we saw one ages ago, back when we were dealing with our old daddy. Except now, we're in a very high level area of the game, and uh, they'll be quite dangerous. So there's two. There's like a dynamic event to clear them all out of this area. Maybe we'll have to wade through. You've got these turrets here as well. Uh, the Flame Legion here, this is a good point while you're doing this event to learn about the kind of things they do for the dungeon that's upcoming. And let me just say as well, uh, we're watching something very special right now. The reason I'm doing this event here is not just to show it off on the series, as I often am doing this stuff, to give you guys the full picture. It's not that I'm being comprehensive and, you know, really trying to give you the full story, and it could generally be skipped if you just ran through. I'm doing this because the game is making me do this. So, let's look at Guild Wars 2 as a product, because I really think the devs were onto something beautiful here, and I wish they'd gone on more with it. Guild Wars 2 as a product was all about revolutionizing various aspects of MMOs, and they had these three big touchstones for PvE. They had the idea of the personal story, which we've been obviously going through and showing. They had their revolutionary new dynamic event system and how that could provide all content without any need for regular quest logs. And they had their revolutionary new idea of how endgame could be, going down to five-man instances, having RNG baked into the missions, and so on and so on and so on. And they succeeded or failed to greater or lesser extents for each of those projects, right? But what they did here with some of the later dungeons in the game is something really cool where they tied their touchstone features together. What you're looking at the devs doing here is they've added a dungeon for endgame, but you're not allowed to enter the dungeon. You can't get into Hrangma the volcano without having done the dynamic events on the open world outside. And that's a truly beautiful thing. Most veteran players of Guild Wars 2 don't appreciate just how cool that design is because they see having to do the dynamic event as a nuisance. What they don't realize though is if the dynamic event was rewarding enough and incentivized well enough and talked about well enough by the game itself it wouldn't be it doesn't have to be a nuisance and what the devs are actually going for is a really cool renewable way of having players interact both in instances but also out in the open world at the same time where they can meet new people form new friendships find new guilds and all that stuff the way that the dungeons were basically hooked into realistic like real territory control in the open world is amazing it like made the whole game feel dynamic and it's a beautiful thing they do with later dungeons so it's not just that i'm doing this to show you that oh look there's a story about how we get there to the volcano no 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 no. i'm showing you this because if i skip and i walk up to the entrance of the volcano right now the npcs there are just going to say look the flame legion have got it we we don't know how to get in We'll have to find something else and that's it so uh yeah i gotta actually get raisin here which is why quite often this event you see i'm doing lots of players can be around so there by the way is a fight with a high level effigy you can see how dangerous they are how low my health gets now that we're back on great sword and we can stack a lot of might with it and get lots of might max makes right we'll be a little bit tankier don't worry terex has got everything he needs to get through this uh so yeah we'll keep pushing that there is the final bridge and you'll notice that they've really upped the ante here Raisin getting knocked out super hardcore by these turrets uh, that are really tanky too. Come on, Raisin. Up you get, buddy. All right, onto the gates here. <laughs> uh, and that thing I was just talking about there as well, you see that they've tied together dynamic events and dungeons. Well, there is that other touchstone, the personal story. And well, you'll see that they, by the end, do something special with that too. So I will return to this discussion later. But I really do believe it's good design. It's just about how it's all packaged and rewarded and telegraphed. Oh, how cool is this? Refreshing. Oh my god, okay, so this is it. As we get Raisin here, you'll see that many of the enemies in the area despawn. There are some effigies and things around still, obviously. Looks like I've got their attention. Now to smash in some flaming heads. Look at that view. For Blood Legion, 
Yeah, you're damn right for Blood Legion. I need to cheer. I keep trying to slash raw. Oh, man. Hell yeah. I'm happy to be at your side, man. For our Legion above all. I like how Ash are already here. Like, they've just been sneakily in the area. Look at the volcano. So, before we get into that beautiful place, uh, what we actually have to do is defend the entrance from uh, loads of forces that will now siege it. You have to hold it for about seven to eight minutes. Uh, but you're on a narrow bridge as you do so. And what an epic idea for an encounter, guys. There's all this lava and tar down there. That is not deep tar. That is shallow. If you fall off this bridge, you are very likely to fall to your death. So that would be really bad. We can only have one peglin, guys. Uh, so make sure that the Flame Legion can't, like, crowd control you off or whatever with blowouts. I don't really know how much of that they have. Uh, but yeah, and think about this, you know, that back in the day, you'd have a ton of players eager to get into the dungeon, whether to meet Rit Lick, Ritlock and Logan on their first time through the game, or even to do the explorable stuff, you know. Uh, and there'd be loads of players here waiting to get inside, so they'd all be doing this event right now, all defending together, and you'd have these large armies. Like, what a cool emergent, natural way to get players to pull together into the end of big metas here. So, yeah, um, I'm going to go up to the gate. Oh, mind you, I'm the only person here. Oh, there you go. Some, another player in the area just killed that last effigy, so we got that event completed as well. Uh, both sides of the bridge will be attacked. Some Flame Legion will pour out of their base, uh, the Flame Citadel, and others will come from this other side. By the way, another really weird bit of trivia just while we're here, and this is going to take a bit. Um, this is called the Citadel of Flame as a dungeon, uh, and that abbreviated is COF. Now, that might not mean anything to you as a Guild Wars uh, 2 only player, but uh, I feel important to note that that's actually a little reference to Guild Wars 1. Guild Wars 1 had a dungeon, and what, uh, it was one of the most entry-level farmable dungeons, basically, where people would solo a lot, and there was a lot of reason to repeat it. So in Guild Wars 1, Eye of the North, there was a dungeon also called COF. Um, I think it was anyway, right? Yeah, uh, cathedral, but it was called the Cathedral of Flames that time, I think. And I've always thought, I think anyway, that COF in Guild Wars 2 is kind of a nod back to that one in the Blood Legion Homelands back in the original game. Anyway, so yeah, you guys don't have to watch this. We're just going to be taking out these effigies amongst the Ash Legion. And the entrance will open. Oh, okay. Right, right, right. It's not that easy. This is a champion right here. Oh, dear. Now, a champion is a very difficult thing to fight right now. A champion effigy at that. My God. And believe me, we're going to have more of these inside the dungeon too. Uh, I'll talk more about the mechanics of uh, uh, how these work later because there's certain ways you can bait their abilities and stuff. But he's probably going to use Firestorms and nuke all of our allies. Luckily, there's another player here. I just saw he charged in. So with that other player, hopefully we can take this out. Because if not, I don't know whether I could solo this. Champions are dangerous. Uh, stay out of the Firestorm. Whew, down it goes. Good. Oh, but we took so long fighting it that the other assault, they've managed to clear their way through. They took Raisin out. Oh, dear. Oh, God, this is pretty bad. No, this is really bad, actually. We need to have more players here than uh, enemies. And... I don't know whether we're going to succeed. They're actually capping it. This white bar is Flame Legion progress to capping this. I guess the best thing to do is to kill the small ones since they die easily. And we can deny contribution from the Flame Legion. I'm going to have to come back over here. While that guy fights that effigy, I'm going to have to come over here and kill these. Oh my god, we got two minutes. I think we might fail this. This is bad. Oh dear. No, we failed. We actually failed. Hold on. So what will happen now? I've never seen this. Am I going to have to do the whole event again? Oh, my God. He's leaving. Raisin is actually full on leaving. Oh, my God. It's Go over. Ahead. The whole thing's over. I've got to do basically the whole video again just to get back. Oh, that much worth of gameplay. Ah. Oh. All right. Well, as you can see, this time, the other players in the area have decided to actually help out. What do you know? So, uh, yeah, it's really easy. None of the Ash Legion have even got close to the effigies, so they haven't been nuked by the firestorms. There's, like, a player over there. There's been players over there as well. I guess the fact that, like, two full cycles to open the gates didn't go anywhere. Lots of players have started building up, and that's exactly the kind of thing I'm talking about that's pretty cool. Even now, so many years after original release, there's still enough people doing those dungeons to come out, and then you end up grouping up doing this stuff. I'm also in the middle of the night playing North American servers right now, so I'm surprised to see anyone, frankly.
Uh, so yeah, we'll just wait for it to be done at just a couple of seconds now. The other thing I've always wondered about is you see like the terrain here, how it's kind of bumpy and it looks like they're separate pieces. I've always wondered if one of the early ideas the devs had for this was that this bridge would only be built and would construct itself when the event pushes to a certain point and then it would break away and the idea is you can't actually get to the entrance at all really. Uh, but then they didn't do it in the end because it is just a kind of very weird asset, isn't it? You see how there are different pieces that are like connected? I wonder if you can accidentally fall through those cracks as well. Uh, but there you go. Ten seconds left. We've got some exciting stuff to talk about in a moment. Last we'll be seeing of the sun. Does that even really count? For a while, guys, as we head inside the volcano. Is that all you've got, Balefire? There isn't a char alive that can best cross in the raider. Brilliant. I've been saying his name wrong the whole time. Raz and the Raider. This is as close to the Flame Legion Citadel as I've ever been. I can smell them. Sulfurous. You're here. Now what? I won't need to do much. They'll be sending troops out soon. I know I would if I were them. Is there, isn't there a more defendable position? What are you, some sort of tactician? I'll take the Flame Legion in battle right here. I don't need defenses. Touchy. Good luck. All right. So, yeah, uh, now they have to reclaim this. For as long as players can defend this bridge, the gates to the dungeon will remain open. The thing is, people will now go into the dungeon, and it will have to be other people that are watching for that, or it will close, and then, you know, that's a natural reason why the event will cycle. So, yes, we can now move on up, um, and we can trigger the Citadel of Flame waypoint. Dungeon number five. Here it is, guys. Uh, so, we've got a member of the uh, Priory standing just outside. I'm a hands-on academic. If we got here without doing the event, she'd have different dialogue telling us to go do the event. But now she says, A glorious day, my friend. The pact has driven the Flame Legion back to the gates of the Citadel of Flame. Logan and Ritlock have both gone ahead. What is the Citadel of Flame? The Citadel of Flame is a main base of the Flame Legion. Its commander, Geheron Balefire, rules within. Like, he's their Imperator, right, guys? I see. Why is Logan here? Well, Captain Logan Thackeray has led a group of human soldiers into the Citadel to take on Garen. So the Pact, the High Legions, Logan's just appeared with some human soldiers. And then, uh, why is Ritlock here? Well, Brim Tribune Brimstone has led a group of Char Warriors into the Citadel to challenge uh, Garen Balefire. Oh, it's such an incendiary situation in there. What needs to be done? Gather a group of five adventurers and head into the Citadel of Flame. You should find Ritlock and Logan within. We don't need five. Packed forces, along with Logan and Ritlock, have marched to the Flame Legion's doorstep with one purpose. Kill Flame Legion leader Geheron Balefire. Enter story mode. This is it, guys. Citadel of Flame. Now, I was going to uh, do this after the event, but since we failed the event before, uh, I did it already. Uh, I have actually upgraded our gear now. Now, we're level 80, and we're not scaled down here. So what this means at level 8 is I have access to ascended gear. What I've actually done is geared us out as best I can. So we're like super, super, super high level right now. Way stronger than you've seen. Terex has been through the rest of this video. My plan with this is not to always wear that gear. We're going to do some kind of interesting stuff with gear as we go forward. So I'm only going to wear really good gear for the dungeons. So that it's not a nightmare basically as we get to these really high level ones. So you guys will get a flavor and a taste of the super high end, you know, maximum number gameplay here. And then we will revert for the bulk of the series and the main game uh, for the majority of the time to our regular normal stuff as we acquire it and go through. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, so you'll notice our health is at 15,000. The numbers listed on all of our stuff is well over 1,000 each. Crits will be quadrupling damage we do. And you're going to see some big meaty numbers here as we go through. So uh, I'll talk about the building stuff in just a moment. What have we got here though? Well... Interestingly, first of all, if you look back towards the entrance, you'll notice that bridge down there, that road, there's like trees and things. So there's a suggestion we've jumped quite a bit far forward now. Maybe we've walked all the way up here and now we've entered the volcano and there's some trees and things we didn't see. Just kind of an interesting hint I've always thought about here. And this is the entrance chamber here. This is called the Chamber of Might. Uh, by the way, I think it was pretty cool, pretty cool out here, the bale fire right at the entrance on the slopes of the volcano. And so, yeah, uh, we get an initial waypoint. The Chamber of Might you only really get to experience and play with in story mode, so a lot of people forget it exists. But here it is. And what have we got ahead? Logan and Ritlock fighting one another amongst the flames with the char circling around the back behind Ritlock roaring. How long do you think the human can hold out against Brimstone? 
Why did they start fighting? No idea. The two of them have been tearing into each other ever since we got here. Where's the Flame Legion? The cowards retreated. They're further down the passage, probably laughing as we fight uh, amongst ourselves here. And yeah, you can see, look, these guys have actually taken out a ton of Flame Legion. So they killed the Flame Legion, realized they were allied forces, and then started beating each other up. This is amazing. Um... Uh, shouldn't we break this up? They'll get tired eventually. In the meantime, you should probably talk to Mama. What do you need to know? Okay. Uh, I want to know what's going on. What do the humans say? Never leave a comrade behind. Foolish mite. Look at the two of them fight. How long have they been with one another? Captain Thackeray got into an argument with his former guildmate just after we arrived. Where's the Flame Legion? Well, they pulled back. They seem happy enough to let us fight among ourselves. And should we break it up? Be my guest. But I wouldn't get between them. You should talk to Mama over there. Okay, we're wasting time. You two, I hope... Uh, let's throw a banner on them and buff them up, shall we? What is going on? Mama, is anyone being professional around here? The world cries out. I must answer. Maybe, yeah, but you're just standing by watching this here. Logan and Ritlock have been there. This is I got here. We need to move forward. Agreed. We're all here. Let's get going. Excellent. We can only hold this position out for so long. Well, let's get underway then, guys. And many challenges, and a wannabe god away inside. What's going on? This human thinks he can take on Gaheran Balefire. No, this Char thinks he can fight the Flame Legion by himself. Fighting with you is the same as fighting solo. And what is that supposed to mean? Enough. Both of you gather your troops. We need everyone for this. Glad you boys could get things settled. Let's get moving. Oh, the door opens. Everybody forms up. There's going to be a big wave of Flame Legion. I'll see you guys for that and the full dungeon next time. The char and the man sat on the log, looking out at the green landscape. Long moments passed before either spoke. Logan said, This is crazy. We're supposed to be killing each other. I never do what I'm supposed to do. Logan huffed. Me neither. Ritlock cocked an eyebrow. What do you mean? Taking a deep breath, Logan said, I've got this brother in Divinity's Reach. He's in the Seraph, for God's sake. Guarding the Queen, even. One of those brothers. Yeah, Logan said, pointing at him. He wears armor that shines like a mirror. White, everything. Stands by the Queen all day. I was supposed to follow him, but a white knight casts a long shadow. <laughs> You're pretty far from that shadow. Huh? Mercenary scout for a supply caravan in the Blaze Ridges, Ritlock said. That's about as far from your brother as you can get. Logan looked at his hands. Guess so. They sat a while in silence before he asked, You got any brothers? About a dozen, Ritlock said with a rueful laugh, and a dozen sisters. Big family. Ritlock shook his head. Char don't have families. We have war bands. The bonds are even stronger. Logan's eyes grew wide. Was that them? Back there? That funeral pyre? Course not, Ritlock snapped. Those were Iron Legion. I'm Blood Legion. Oh, you guys look alike, Logan said with a shrug. So, where's your war band? Back east somewhere. I left them. That comment hung in the air between them. Why? My reasons are my own. Just then, Kaith returned, flopping a brace of dead rabbits down on the nearby rock. All right, so I hunted them, you cook them. Sure, Ritlock said, relieved to end the conversation. I'm a good cook. Logan blasted a laugh. Yeah, right, char cooking. What's wrong with char cooking? It's right in the name. Shut it, Ritlock advised, and don't open it again until there's roasted rabbit.